Hello. How's everybody? Good? Hello. Good. I'm Elizabeth. I'm the Chaos Community Manager. If I haven't seen you, um, please come say hi because I'm super, super excited to see everybody here. This is really awesome. A lot of you I've seen on Zoom or in the Slack and other places, so I'm really happy to see people in person. Um, yeah, so um, this is Kevin. I'll let you introduce yourself. Uh, Kevin Lombard. Uh, I'm from the University of Nebraska, Omaha. Uh, so I've been with Chaos uh, from the beginning, pretty much. So. Awesome. So today we're going to talk about why we leave and join. You know what? Can I take this off? Is that cool? I can't breathe and talk loudly at the same time. Um, why we join and leave open source communities. Okay, so several months ago, um, Kevin and myself and Matt german Prey, Sean Goggins over here, and a student um, named Wen Yi embarked on a research journey to learn about how corporations were engaging with open source projects and what levels they were, they were uh, engaging with them. Um, we talked about uh, a lot of things. We talked to 34 people so far, and these have been really in-depth conversations, about an hour long each. Um, we have a list of 20 questions around that we ask them, all kinds of different things about open source. Um, everything from like why they would, why would they engage with open source communities, like what the criteria is, if they have their own open source program office, if they are just contributing back up, upstream or if they're just using it, uh, what the structure is, all kinds of things. Um, we also uh, had talk to people um, from a variety of different backgrounds and roles within the companies. So it wasn't just you know, kind of one. We were trying to get a real good balance of perspectives. And um, we have a very diverse group of participants, all, all sizes of companies, different, uh, different industries and things like that too. So it's been, a, it's been a journey and it's been extremely interesting. Um, I've been in open source for 20 years and I have joined and left open source communities myself. And so I have my own perceptions and my own experiences, but it was just extremely interesting to hear um, from, from other people as well. So um, after we were gathering this information, as I said, we've done 34, we're not quite finished yet, um, but we're, we're enough that we can make some general, uh, some general assumptions. And we've seen some themes floating to the top quite a bit. Um, so we're doing a qualitative content analysis. We look at all of the, the transcripts of all of the, the um, recorded interviews and then um, we'll go through and, and we do pair coding to uh, make sure that we're getting a balanced uh, perception of what, what is being said and, and interpretation of what's being said. Um, so we do that, we have a couple people who look through those and then we uh, see what themes come up. We code, code words into them to make sure that they're, you know, we lump them into buckets essentially. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what we've been up to and, oops. So these, we're only gonna focus today on the last couple of questions that we asked. We're not going through the whole 20 because we don't have that much time. Um, but we are gonna talk about, these were the questions that we asked these people. Are there certain characteristics of an open source project or community that you look for prior to engagement that may inform decisions about joining? Um, and then also, are there certain characteristics that might make you consider leaving the community? So let's talk about today what was said in those questions. And I will turn it over to Kevin. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Uh, so the, the themes that we've started to pull out uh, started to kind of look uh, a little bit like things that could be measured by chaos metrics. Uh, and I've, I've just thrown all of the themes up here kind of randomly. And I, I did that on purpose because uh, I want to illustrate we're, we're not ranking. Uh, I can't tell you that any of these themes are more important than others. Other than, other than one theme on there, uh, and that's utility. Uh, uh, no one is engaging with open source that we talk to uh, for altruistic purposes. It's, it's, always about, it's always about utility, a problem that's being solved for them. Uh, but, but otherwise, uh, the, the bold, the bold uh, themes are themes that we really saw uh, quite often from multiple, multiple people. Uh, and we saw them in, in, in subtle, subtly different ways. Uh, and I'll just I'll kind of go through and, and, and talk about some of them. So I've, I've just mentioned utility. So it's, does the project uh, solve a problem for us? Uh, that's the, the first thing we ask when, we're, uh, uh, when we decide if we're going to use 
a piece of open source software. Uh, but it's also the first, first, first thing we ask when we, uh, when we decide if we want to join a community. And that really is what we're talking about here, joining a community and engaging in collaborative design of open source software. All right, so uh, oftentimes we, we go to the, the, the project website, we look for documentation, that's, uh, that's the first step. Uh, documentation can tell us a lot about uh, the project. <laughs> I think the computer actually just, just shut off. off. All right. <laughs> Lawless. Sometimes we look for for contribution to the Wow. Wow. I'm in the shade. Okay. Yeah, we will. Uh, let's. let's Apologies. Grab mine real quick. Is it just totally dead? Yeah. Did it run out of bed? Dead crash? Nope. Dead. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> That's going to be a, a problem. I'm not going to think about it right now. Stage quick. Stage quick. Yeah. Oh, it's coming back, Kevin. Hold on. I don't know if we can get it to work. Yeah. Are you taking Anyone have questions? <laughs> <laughs> Happy to open the floor right now. Yeah, let's just use yours. I'm so sorry, everyone. Apologies. Do you have a headphone jack? I do. It never happens to any of us. <laughs> Can I borrow your power? Yeah, of course. Okay, so uh, documentation. One of the first places we look when we're uh, deciding whether or not we want to engage with, a, with an open source project is documentation. Documentation can tell us a lot about a project. Uh, the, the documentation that's available can tell us about the professionalism of the project. It can start to give us uh, some ideas about the quality of activity that happens in, in a project. Uh, additionally, uh, it can tell us a big thing that we're interested in, uh, and that's licensing. So is the, is the licensing, does the licensing work with our business model? Does it work for our organization? Uh, and that's, that's a non-starter. So if the licensing is not appropriate, then, uh, then we can't be there. Uh, other things that we look at, uh, we look at organizational control and project governance. Uh, those two things are, are somewhat similar. Uh, organizational control refers to uh, the corporate leadership within a project. So if a, if a project is being dominated by one corporation, we have to ask ourselves, are we even, are, are our contributions welcome? Can our pull requests, uh, will they get accepted? Will, will our code be accepted? Uh, and then related to that is, is project governance. Uh, does leadership of the project uh, share those, those same values? Are they, are they willing to accept our code? Uh, so we're interested in how the project is governed and what corporations are going to be uh, involved as well. Uh, usage, the usage of the project is a, is a, is a big issue as well. So uh, uh, for, us to, for us to make an investment in uh, this project and engaging, it, it does have to be a, a project that has some usage. Uh, quality of code is important. Uh, the security involved, uh, security issues for the project are incredibly important. Uh, and then the last two things we see, uh, and we see these two a lot as well, uh, culture. Uh, and culture is uh, the, 
the professionalism of the uh, the company, and also the uh, the inclusiveness and uh, uh, the diversity, equity, and inclusion issues that uh, that we can see around uh, uh, an organization. And uh, when we join uh, when we join a, a project, we we look for those diversity, equity, and inclusion issues. Uh, and then the, the last thing is sustainability and maintenance, right? So is there active maintenance uh, occurring on this project? Uh, if we're going to invest in engaging in this project, we wanna make sure that we're not left holding the bag, right? Are we the, are we the only ones working on it or are there other people involved? Uh, and interestingly enough, uh, culture and especially uh, uh, DEI, uh, that one kind of occurred in a couple different places. It was uh, a lot of our interview subjects uh, located that within sustainability, uh, and they also uh, located it within uh, risk, uh, and the, so the, the risk of the, the project uh, failing. So the next question we asked was why we leave. Uh, and what you'll notice is that a lot of these themes were on the previous slide as well. Uh, and we're, we're back to utility again. And uh, so, you know, when we when we stop needing that project, when we stop needing that piece of software, it, it makes it makes sense for us to leave, or or if we find a better alternative. Uh, although, uh, a lot of the the subject or the interview participants that we uh, we talked to did say that this could be a little tricky. So, uh, finding a graceful way to leave a project that we've been engaged in. Is is difficult, and, and oftentimes there are some some politics involved. I have a question. Brian, did oh. you want to have a question? I'm curious the the difference between governance and being managed. When you say managed, you're talking about like just the general project process workflow. Is that the differentiation? Uh, so, uh, being managed is yeah. actually so. What that one is is when you're asked to do a lot of work, right? So when when you're when you're being managed by the by the project and you're giving, uh, you come in and they're they're asking more of you than you would like to uh, to give. Okay. So it's it's different than project governance. It's more the they're asking you to take more of the load than you Understood. than you're comfortable with. Thank you. Uh, uh, so once again, we see usage. So I, I, it's that's kind of an obvious one. If the if no one's using the software. If we're not using the software, uh, then it then it makes sense to uh, uh, to leave the project. Uh, licensing change uh, was one of the the top reasons that we saw for for uh, leaving a project. So, uh, if you join a project with a li license and then the the project for for some reason moves to a uh, a different type of license, that is the that is the exit door for for many organizations. Uh, Sustainability and maintenance. Uh, once again, we don't want to. We don't want to be left holding the bag. Uh, if we're in a project and it uh, other people aren't working on it, uh, it if it becomes a situation where it's just us maintaining the software, uh, we would start to question whether or not we want to be there. Uh, is the project active? Uh, Active, once again, that's the number of participants, the, the response times involved. Uh, all of the participants, uh, uh, most, most of the participants, when, when asked uh, why, they, why would they join and why they leave, uh, active, an active live community was something that they mentioned. Uh, once again, we see, we see project governance and organizational control. So these are the, and it's the same it's the th same theme that we saw when we, uh, for why we join, right? So are our contributions welcome? Uh, and can we make, uh, can we help move the direction of the project along? Uh, and then the last thing we have, once again, is culture. And I will say, I will say this, uh, culture was probably the number one reason uh, that our participants, uh, without ranking anything, Almost everyone mentioned culture as a reason to leave a project, uh, and specifically uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion issues around harassment, uh, toxicity, uh, and bullying. 
Uh, so with that, I will uh, turn it back over to Elizabeth, and she'll kind of talk about the, the big picture for these themes that we've, uh, that we've identified. So it turns out community is pretty important, which was really nice for me. <laughs> I was like, oh, yay, awesome. All right, we appreciate it. Um, and as you can see, it really came down to three, three main themes, and that was project stability, project sustainability, and then, of course, diversity, equity, and inclusion, as, as Kevin has mentioned before. Um, so stability, you know, people want to be in stable, active um, and, and, uh, communities, and that's where they decide to engage. Because when you think about it, like, people's time is very limited, and so, um, you know, they, they tend to be a little picky. And so they can spend their time wherever they want, and this is, this is where, how they're making their choices. So if you're running a community, these are things that you can, can kind of grab onto and improve if you need to, um, or, or just pay attention to. So stability, um, of course he mentioned licensing, security is a big deal, um, and then the quality of code and the, the user base that there's, there's a lot of active users. Um, again, he mentioned activity. Having more contributors is always a good thing. Um, share the load a little bit. Uh, maintenance and quality of activity, so it's more than just you know these um, really quick comments. There's actual meaningful discussions happening. There's meaningful work being done, um, not just you know spammy comments or whatever. That doesn't count as activity. <laughs> um, and then inactivity is also you know if there's nothing, if it's if it's just you know radio silence, people people don't want to be in communities like that. But what I really want to focus on is this uh, the diversity, equity, inclusion piece of it because. Almost every single person I talked to, as Kevin mentioned, um, did mention that. And, and so it, it really just kind of hits home with how centering DEI in your project can really make a difference when you're trying to build a community, when you're trying to get people engaged and keep them around. The retention is huge. So making a, a community inclusive, um, toxicity, it, people, you know, I even had um, someone say that if they see a, a, a toxic behaviors in a community, even if it's the best software in the world, they will not use it in their company. They will not use it, that is their policy. And I really appreciated those comments. Um, I just thought that was really super interesting. So no longer are the days when you can just throw a piece of software out there, a piece of code out there, and, and you know expect it to just do great things. You really have to, to center DEI, even if you want it to attract users um, of your project. Um, really, that's pretty much it. Um, does anybody have questions? I don't even know if we have time for questions. But. Yeah, four minutes. Four, four minutes, minutes, questions. four minutes for questions. Who has questions? Question. Yeah. Um, what's your opinion on the effects of like optimized contributor pathways? Like just as an example, the, one of the communities I'm involved with, there's there's like dozens, like maybe if you stretch the definition, like potentially thousands of ways to get involved with their project. But I have a hard time articulating like what's the impact if those pathways are inoptimal. You know, do you, do you have any, like, did you get any sense of, like, the importance of that? And, like, onboarding and, like, those things, like, clear. Yeah, exactly. I don't recall that being a theme, but I will say that intuitively, as a community manager, I know that's important. Um, just know I, th that I recall. Kevin, do you? Uh, it was not a theme associated with these two questions. Uh, we did have a few questions about the organizational structure of their corporate OSPOs and some of the, the methods that they help to, uh, uh, or that they use to help people uh, get started with open source or, or change the culture of their organization to open source. But I, uh, I don't think anything came up about a distinct path or uh, not, not that specific, no. Thank you, though. Good, good question. Mm -hmm. Other yeah. questions? I have a question. Do, um, did you um, get any feedback that would suggest the difference between corporate contributors and non-corporate contributors? I know that in my own life, like I have one profile for stuff I'll do at work and another, which is much more political and altruistic for stuff I'll do. So I, I should say the the target of, of these interviews were very specifically corporate contributors. So, uh, so that's that's really the only the only focus we saw. We we didn't uh, 
we didn't see anything for for non corporate contributors or or volunteers of that nature. It, it was all corporate participation. So, uh, but uh, I I do believe there's a there's a difference. Uh, so. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Sorry again.